what are tea dips with general disturbance? This is the Bishop, the tier 5 British SPP. This one's located on the northeast corner of Province and it's under command of Hospitals. Well, this RT is armed with a 4.5 new howitzer. The actual Bishop's actually had a 25 pounder, but that's actually the shotgun in this RT. And the 4.5 inch is capable of doing 450 Alpha penetrating 28 millimeters of armor. It's the same gun as on the FP304. He's trying to get a quick shot there at enemy tanks coming up the hill. He, could, he was looking for the gates to be knocked down of those little uh, barriers since they've been knocked down. I know somebody is fairly close. Well, this is a bit of a short range RT, and he's trying to get shots on that T40. Lines it up, rounds out, and. Connect hit! 152 and the target's destroyed. The killer was the Fifi on our team. Yes, it's a Fifi on each team. But on our team, we've got a bishop. On the enemy team, they've got an SU-122A, the Soviet tier 5. Well, Hospitals is into this habit of looking away after he shoots, which means you don't often see exactly what he's aiming well, what happens to the target? Two direct hits from both parties on that uh, little uh, duck. So that tank is already uh, suffering, but we've got a T7 up there, and that guy's got very thin armour. So if a direct hit by hospitals might actually see him go back to the gallery. Well, nearly, because it did pen him. 517 hit points is a high roll. Remember, 450 alpha, 517 is a high roll. Quite a large high roll. He tries to go for another kill shot, but doesn't get it. Now, we're going to pump up here. Boom. The pump here, actually, I should say. Here comes a 5 4. And uh, I'm afraid that is an OP German medium premium. Or premium medium, whichever way you want to actually say it, but he's really close. And well, Hospitals might actually have to defend himself with a shotgun if that guy gets too close. There he is, he's coming towards us. Oh, a good shot! A direct hit, but it doesn't kill him with that shot from the BP dance. But he was spotted, so he does have to move because the enemy BP will try and get a hit on him if he can. Okay, he's probably unspotted now, so. Just going to the bushes and hide. Oh, that's the enemy RT firing in. Fell behind him. So yes, he was spotted. The enemy RT did attempt to get him, but couldn't work out where he was. But he will look for the tracer to try and get a shot now. Because he's had to fall back behind the bushes, he is restricted in how far he can shoot. And so Hospitals is going to have to move forward if he wants to get good hits on the enemy. Or he's going to have to uh, stay back here and wait for the enemy to come to him. And I don't think he really wants to do that. He did find a snapshot there at that BT-7. And if he stops for a short while then Hospitals might be able to get around into him. He's got a fairly good trajectory. Oh, nice, he got a splash hit there on the BT-7 as he's coming forward. So the enemy is coming towards him, but the BT-7 is veered off and he's now going after our M8A1, I think, or is he? No, he's just gone down the the east side of the valley. There's a chappy down there as well. Now, there are some enemy tanks down south that we haven't dealt with yet. That BT-7 he hit earlier with a a uh, penetrating shot he hasn't been seen since and there's a 14 tp somewhere up on this side of the map and so it may be but the hospitals will get a chance to shoot at the enemy directly when they get close we do have a wolverine nearby and there's the first of them it's a vk 301b just got with the wolverine oh so close but we do have a fairly fast reload on this rt so if we get another chance, we'll put it into him, into the rear of the... Uh, well, again, he managed to move out of the way, but the 14 TP is still there. So now he's got two targets to aim at, but we lost the Wolverine. Okay, fires one in, and oh, that hit the 14 TP badly for 199. And now the enemy kind of is stuck on that corner. 
He's firing rounds in. Oh, that was a blind hit. I think that might have hit the 14 TP, but it was a blind hit on that corner. And you can see Artie Shells arcing in from the other side of the battlefield. And here comes the VK. He's just been badly hit by our stug Rai al B. We're going for another hit. He fires one in. And no, it's close. But it only damaged the tracks. It didn't actually get a kill. Now, can he get the right one in? Rounds out. No, nope. landed in front of him as he falls back. But the kill shot comes in from the stug. And he gets that one. All right, well, we've got... Another enemy down in the valley, a chappy. Oh, two RTs firing at the same time, at the same target. Must be pretty disconcerting. And it looks like one of the enemy RTs has worked out where hospitals is again. Because rounds are starting to come in in this direction. But I think that was from the PP. That was a round, I think, from the SU-122A. Lots of shells arcing into this side of the map. And the BT-7 dies to our looks. So it's not so safe to be here at the moment with shells coming across the valley towards us. Okay, there's an enemy tank destroyer across the valley. Uh, they take one. Our BP's decided to shoot it in. I think he's a bit out of range for hospitals. But there's a lot of enemy tanks over that side of the valley. Hospitals is defending this area against that 14 TP. There's only four left on his team, two of them are team. So he needs to be alert because there's still plenty alive on the enemy team. Seven enemies, including their two R team. He's expecting one of the enemy to turn up shortly. In fact, a Matilda's now turned up in the valley. And he's going for the cap area. Rounds out. No, he wasn't fully dialed in, but he is fully dialed in now. And before he can shoot, the Matilda's killed by the looks. Okay, we're going for the P2640. Rounds out. Predicted he would actually be there. Oh, he pulled away. He knows that he's under severe RT fire. He's going to try an accurate shot between the buildings. Rounds out. Oh, damages him. Nice hit. And he did track damage on the guy, but unfortunately we lost the looks. They killed each other, so they get an eye for an eye out of that one. But now there's only three left on our team. The Stork, who's only a short distance away. And there are five enemies out there, including two Arties. So, yes, this is going to kind of be um, difficult. The Stork's moving to try and find out where the 14TP and the BT-7 have gone. He's having a quick look. Move down to that corner. I reckon he thinks that if anybody comes across the valley, they're going to go through the cap and I might give him a advance warning. Because we can't see down there if he's over here. So if they do come from that direction, we're only going to get sighting of them at the very last moment when they pop over the rise, the crest. In the meantime, the Stug has decided to go further south. Hospitals decided to uh, follow him. And yes, one of the enemy has gone into the cap. Now, if the cap stops, it means he's coming up this side to try and kill us. So I think what, uh, what Hospitals is probably going to have to do is blind firing where he thinks the enemy might be. I, that's not... Oh, we killed him! He got him! I was about to say that might not be a good idea, but he's actually found one of them. He killed him. It was the M81. And I've also seen that one of the RT is now up in the north of the map. He's in the corner. In the northwest corner of the map. Somewhere in those fields. Just north of the uh, the road. Hospitals is sitting behind this rock at the moment. Because he's expecting one of the enemies to suddenly appear from that direction. Probably the 14 TP. No, the 14 TP is now down in the valley and the stub gets him. So now it's Elon's. There's two RT on either side, but our side has got a tank destroyer. Their side has got a light tank and their light tank is very badly damaged. Whereas our stub, I don't believe is. I think he's fairly well. He's fairly healthy. He's got half his health left, whereas I think the BT-7 has got virtually nothing left. Hospitals has decided to stay where he is for the moment. 
I know I've had, I actually had a lot of requests for replays featuring the uh, Bishop because um, despite the fact that it's tier 5, there's a lot of players out there who rather like this little arty based on the Valentine tank. They built 149 of them between 1942 and 1943. It was only a stopgap. Originally they were going to be uh, uh, waiting on, uh, originally they were going to buy the, the M7, the, uh, the American Bishop, but uh, in the end they decided not to because uh, the Bishop had a 105 mm gun and I think Hospitals is putting us below the frame of the, the, the camera actually at some points here. Um, they were going to buy the M7 but unfortunately they uh, didn't have any stocks of 105mm shells and so uh, they decided to build the Sexton instead. And the Sexton was being built over in Canada and then shipped out to the UK. In fact, it was, uh, it was being built in Montreal. So the, the Bishop was only a stopgap. That's why they built so few of them, only 149. Most of them saw service in the desert or in Italy. And we found one of the enemy archies, and in fact, it's their BP. One quick snapshot. Direct hit! Beautiful direct hit. Now, finish him off. Next shot. He fires it in, but unfortunately, the Fifi managed to get back into cover quickly enough. The annoying thing is that our uh, Stug got killed, but they did lose one of their arty. They lost the, uh, the uh, Fifi in the end. He's just been killed by our Fifi. He managed to get a decent shot in there. The SU-122 must be the one who's up north. He's somewhere in grid squares B2 or B3, because that's where I saw the tracer come from. So, um, the Bishop didn't carry that much ammunition in, in actual reality, and here they've got them carrying 39 shells in the game. But in actual fact, the uh, the bishop had to carry a trailer around with it just to carry enough shells for uh, use uh, for its normal use. It didn't have much room in the tank because mainly it was a uh, a light tank, an infantry tank, and therefore it was carrying two pounder shells in the infantry tank tank mode. And here's the SU-122. It's come all the way back from the north. And now we can see him coming towards us. Oh, he fired that one a little too early. And the SU-122 realizes the trouble he's in. Okay, can we get a shot? Oh, the SU-122 didn't like that. Trying to get the aim on him as he's on the move. Line him up. Yes, that was a good hit. 206. He stopped. Now that tank doesn't aim very well with this 122, but the BP takes the kill. So that just leaves the BT-7 as the last enemy alive, and well, the last time we saw him, he was actually behind us up on that hill. It's going back into the cap to try and force the BT-7 to come out. The fact that the SU-122 came all the way south from up north kind of suggests that the BT-7 can't. He might be up there. And he might be on his side. It is a very light tank. And it's very likely that he's flipped himself over. I've managed to flip a BT-7 before. It's not easy. It's not difficult, rather. You only have to go on uh, hit the corner of a rock at the wrong angle. And you just flip right over. And I suspect that's actually what happened. We're into the last minute now. And there's not enough time us to get the uh, victory unless we go up and find the enemy BT-7 and kill him. We can't cap out in time. I'm not sure if we'll have enough time to get up there and find him. The Fifi's coming south, but he should have he should have come south after he killed the enemy Fifi. But he didn't, and as a consequence now, we're in a bit of a pickle. I think we're going to get a draw out of this. It's a shame, because it could have been a win. 
If only we could find him. Ten seconds left to go and it's going to be a draw. Yeah, I think it's a draw. I don't know what Hosmos is doing, but he's getting the view to go all over the place. And that is a draw. Here's the end of battle results, and that was an ace tanker for Hospitals in the Bishop. He managed to get a Bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits. In fact, he got 11. He got a high caliber for dealing the most damage in the game. And he also managed to get a Confederate as well for hitting more of the enemy than anyone else on his team. His win rate in that battle was 7,104, which is Super Unicum standard and quite a bit more. So very well done on that. Let's have a look. Um, oh, you have to scroll the page to see all the enemies you hit. Let's have a look at team score. Well, he definitely got the highest damage in the game at 2,543, which is rather unusual for a game where there are two Fifis in the game. She expect the Fifis to do well, not the Bishop. But yes, he did get the high caliber. The second highest damage went to the other, um, the Fifi on his team, the other RT. 1,211 hit points of damage to him. And the third highest damage in the game actually went to the M8A1 on the enemy team with 1,110 hit points. When it came to kills, it was the Fifi on his team who did well. He got five kills, so he's obviously not collecting a huge amount of damage, but he was getting the kills as he was finishing off enemy tanks that were hit by um, hospitals and others. Four kills went to the Lux and to the Stug guy Al Sarum B, and two kills went to the Panzer Fomfia, the P2640, the SU76 GFT, the Matilda, the Fifi on the enemy team, and we can see that oh, Hospitals only got the one kill, but that actually helped him to get the Confederate. When it came to base XP, yep, he's got definitely got the win here with 541, the highest number. 496 went to the Lux, and 492 went to the uh, to the Fifi on his own team. He fired 29 rounds in that game, got 10 direct hits on the enemy, and two penetrations. Now, I suspect that one of the penetrations was definitely that BT-7, the one who survived. Yep, 517 hit points off that one hit. I also suspect that he actually did get a pen on one of the others. Yes, it was the M8A1, the one he killed over on the other side. Uh, he got um, 431 hit points off that one uh, from one penetration, yes. And I believe as well that it was um, it was one of those ones where he pulled, fired, pulled back, and then we saw the uh, the kill actually appear. So very well done on getting that. Um, if we go back to the details, 15 splashes on the enemy, 2,543 hit points of damage, of which 1,659 were at more than 300 meters. He did also spot one enemy vehicle. That was the SU-122A. In fact, I, I did see the tracer from him coming from that corner. That's why he was so far north. 11 enemy vehicles were damaged. One were killed. So there's a 10 difference there. He, he only, he didn't hit four of the enemy tanks, but every every other tank on the enemy team he, he hit. Um, so it's only four that he didn't get a chance to kill or damage. 189 hit points of damage assistance. And he also got 20 defense points when he reset the cap. He earned 26,497 credits on a free to play account, 3,024 for Courageous Resistance, that's for getting an epic or battle hero medal in a losing or drawn game, it was a draw, and he did get a couple of battle hero medals. He also, after ammunition resupply, took away 22,271 credits profit, 941, uh, 541 base XP, and 329 for Courageous Resistance took away 870 experience points altogether. He said those pesky lefties stealing all the kills. Well, yes, they were actually, but you see, they've got a better, well, not a better, well, it is a better fire rate, but um, they've got a longer range than Hospitals has. So although Hospitals has got a fairly quick aim on the enemy, it's basically almost the same gun in many ways, although the, the Fifi has got a 105 millimeter, which is of German origin, and the 4.5 inch howitzer is of British origin. Um, the fact of the matter is they both got about the same stats, except of course the Fifis can fire further away. And in fact, actually that's why it ended up as a draw because that Fifi wasn't inclined to move further south because of the BT-7. And if he had actually moved further south, he could have joined Hospitals in the cap and that might have got them the win. 
anyway um that's the end of those results let's have a quick look at the armor on the um the, uh, the bishop so you can see straight off that uh, the superstructure is 30 millimeters thick that's quite thick actually for a casement on a very small tank but it is a small tank it's a light tank uh, but with he fairly heavy armor look at this armor on the front here 60 millimeters here the upper plate 30 millimeters but it's so well angled it gives you 70. Uh, the front plate here is 60 millimeters it's an infantry tank because it's designed to actually knock down gun emplacements and the like it's designed to walk alongside the or drive alongside the infantry and the moment they spot something that they can't destroy the valentine's supposed to go after it and destroy it so it's got fairly heavy armor on the front on the sides it's a little weaker it's 50 millimeters on the side all the way down but the engine deck is very very weak it's only 10 millimeters on the engine deck and um that's normally where they stow the shells this is the weak spot that most tanks would aim for 17 millimeters there uh effectively 23 and it's only 10 millimeters there 41 uh, the casement though 30 millimeters all the way around is fairly good that's um that's not bad for for an rt uh but again it's uh, again a weak spot that you should aim for if you're in a tank so that's uh, the um uh that's the armor let's have a quick look at the live you can see fairly heavy armor all around it is a decent little light tank uh they've put enough armor as a stopgap to to protect the crew from shell splinters and bullets let's have a look at the modules okay this is the module map and you can see driver sitting up front right in the center uh, he's got the gunner behind him to the right and the loader is behind the gunner you can see there and the tank commander is on the left hand side now the tank commander and the uh, loader act as the um, both as loaders when they're actually uh, helping shove those shells in the driver normally gets out of bishop comes around the back and he'll take the shells out of the little cart that's being towed behind the uh, bishop and he'll put the shells on the engine deck and then the uh, the loader and the commander will then feed those shells into the breach as the gunner gets the gun set on target you can see there's one central engine with a fuel tank so solitary fuel, fuel tank on one side with the transmission coming up behind there's a big amorak right down deep in this tank uh, and the t two ready racks are actually either side of the crew now in actual fact the uh, the cockpit or the casement of the the bishop is actually very cramped and they normally open the doors at the back of the vehicle to uh, allow the crew to work and that it's it also gets the fumes out away from the uh, the gun and so the uh, uh, the crew can actually work um, without having uh, being suffocated uh, as you would in an enclosed arty so uh, the the driver then feeds the shells to them one by one and they put them into the breach but um, uh, there's normally there's no ammo actually stored in the casement it's normally actually deep down inside the body of the tank because remember this is an RT converted from a light tank and a light tank would normally keep the ammo actually under the turret or in the turret but uh, in this vehicle there wasn't much space even in the uh, in the casement so the shells weren't stored up there they were shell stored below but wargaming have actually put them inside the, uh, the casement and they put the radio there too as well for the commander to operate so that's where all the modules are if you want to knock one of these off you actually aim for the casement because of course it's the weakest armor technically other than the engine deck if you're a smart person and you know that uh, where the weak spot are is you'll actually aim for the engine deck because every time you your shell hits it will go through uh, but if you're not then aim for the casement not for the auto aim because that will go onto the heaviest armor which is right up front where the driver is and you're very unlikely to get those shells through because it's very thick armor so don't auto aim onto this thing try to aim manually and aim for the casement and uh, that will help well we've got a second replay for you and this replay was only just received yesterday um but it's definitely worth watching and it comes from one of our regulars or one of the members of what rt noobs but he's got his own stream and he's also got his own channel i believe uh for videos but uh, let's have a look watch of dr nix and dr nix is on the uh, northeast spawn of karelia The 
as I mentioned, the casement is definitely the strong, uh, is definitely weaker than most other places on the tank. The engine deck, the corrugated engine deck there, that's the weakest area at all. And all. If you can put a shell in here, you should be able to kill this tank fairly easily. But uh, around the front, you can see that area where the driver's ports are, just down here. And um, they're actually quite strong, so don't auto aim onto this thing because it's a waste of time. You're much better off manually aiming at the casement to try and take them out. Those doors, you can actually see them there. Well, there's the latch at the back there. They just throw those doors open whenever they were uh, actually stopping to shoot. And that's what Dr. Nix is going to do now. Okay, he's dialing in on Type T34, the Chinese Tier 5. Needs to move a little closer. That's it. And he's ready. Type T34 keeps pulling back. Okay, he's lined him up. And then the guy moves again. He must be sitting on that corner. Oh, direct hit! And it looks like that might have been where his engine deck was, so he might be badly damaged. I think more than likely that might be a penetrating shot. It's going to go for the M4A1. That's it. Got it fully dialed in. And... Oh, he got a fire! And he's killed him! Yes, he got a fire. A, a blind shot fire. And... Yep, got him. Killed him. P43. A direct hit on the engine day bay for 157. Waiting for him to come forward again. That Type T34 is coming to sight again. He's missing quite a few hit points. We're not fully dialed in yet, but now we are. Rounds out. That's a hit. 201. Nice shot. Now, can you finish him off? Instead, he's putting the aim back because these guys are getting rather close. But yeah, he's going to go for the Type T34. Rounds out. That's a kill. So now two kills. You notice how Dr. Nix, because he's been playing the game a lot, his aim dials in almost immediately on the enemy. It dials in very, very quickly. First shot is a hit on the P-43. He's going to try and get a kill shot by firing on the engine deck if he can. He's leading the target there for a moment, and whilst he was doing that, the BK-3018 on our team took the opportunity to get the kill. Our guys are forming a line. But the enemy RT doesn't appear to be firing in this direction. But the enemy RT is a bishop. And we've no idea where he is. Now Do Dr. Nix has decided to fall back. But I suppose that's mainly because he doesn't know where the enemy is either in the swamp or to the north edge of the map. Whilst he's driving up here, he's also aware that the enemy's getting rather close to that corner. And if he doesn't take a defensive position, he won't be able to get shots on the enemy. He backs up into these bushes over here. That's better. Oh, he's got lovely shots on these enemy tanks now. That Celsius first. Rounds out. Lovely hit. Big hit, 186. Unfortunately, Celsius gets a kill mark BK. He's going to try again. This time around the Skoda. And it's a one shot kill. Two so well. It's his first shot on the Skoda, but he gets a kill. Now he's up to three kills. Going for the Excelsior again, but changes his mind to the SU 85. And he gets a nice hit on him for 168. Well, he has pulled back, but I'm pretty sure he's still there. No, he's actually pulled back quite a bit. He's just uh, gone back to the corner. We've got a heavy one to up now, so we're going for the Excelsior. Fairly heavy armor on the front of that vehicle, but it's still vulnerable to a Q. And they're getting close enough that they could actually see us, so now we do have to pull back behind this rock, but we can shoot up over the top of it. Got a very high trajectory, the Bishop. And another hit in the Excelsior. One more shot to kill him. Come on, you can do it. 
Ramsdale. That's a kill. Four kills now. We've got other guys covering our back at the moment, but Dr. Nix is using all his skills to take these enemies out one by one. We could probably hit that M10 RBFM. He's holding his aim on that spot at the moment. It's a maximum range, that M10 RBFM. Oh, now we've got the KV-1 coming up. Round south. Direct hit, 201. It's probably got enough for a high caliber by now. Can't be certain though, because obviously we're playing this game without mods. There he is. Tried for the new deck, and he gets it. You can see the hole is right on the engine deck at the rear. Unfortunately, the KD-1 just wiped out our KD-1. But it's another hit, this time for 192, and three critical hits on the target. And that's a kill shot! So that's five kills now for Dr. Nix. He's killed one third of the enemy team. Now remember, there's still two tanks down that end. There's the M10 RBFM. He's trying to creep up using that dip to get shots on our team. Rounds out. Well, he managed to move up in time to avoid it being hit. But remember, he's got very thin armor. Only enough for a machine gun bullet. Look at that, 213 hit points. Come on, finish him off. This shell should do it. We've been spotted. Oh, but he killed the M10. So that's a top gun. And it was the enemy, I think it was the enemy KV-1 that spotted him. But he's now received fire from an enemy SU-85. He needs to get come behind the rock. Lost 144 hit points to the SU-85. I think that was the uh, 25 millimeter round. Puts another shell into the KV-1. He's shooting just through that bush. The KV-1 can't see him at the moment. Now he's gone into cover. If he backs up, we should be able to hit him. Yes! Seven kills! Okay, let's get this SU-85. He was being a real pain. We're equal on numbers at the moment in terms of kills. That was a nice hit on the SU-85. It makes more one shot. We just need to see where he is. He fires a blind shot in to the same coordinates. He's got 14 rounds left and here comes the enemy bishop. Who's been hanging back all this time. Let's try and get a kill shot off him if we can. He's backing up. He rounds out. This looks good. It is good, and it's a kill. And that is a Radley Walters. Okay, there's an enemy tank behind us. It's an AMXEOC. We know that it's an SU 85 down there somewhere. But our teammates in the tank destroyer has actually joined us. So we're now firing blind. Instead, I think we're going to go for the AMX CLC next. It's still possible to get a pools medal. Nearly got the AMX CLC there, but the kill shot actually goes to the M4A1. And that means now there's only two enemies there for Panzer Gear, Alcimon H, and the SU 85. Still possible to get a pools. Just firing a quick blind shot in there. It's got 10 rounds left. We know the SU-85 was sitting on the corner. The rock's in the way of them. <coughs> Ideally, he needs to move to a position where he can shoot, but he he's worrying about that Panzerfeer Alcelon H coming up over the... Uh, over the other side. 
because the M4A1 is just sort of like over a ridge line. So I'm not sure he's covering that corner well enough. So Dr. Nix has decided he has to turn around and if the M4A1 spots something, he'll get a shot. Oh! Now, what happened there? The SU-85 died, killed by the T-67. So that means now the enemy team has only got that Panzer Fear Alcelon H. So the M4A1 really needs to turn around. Oh, he's done that. Okay, now he needs to cover that side of the map. The T67's gone up onto the horseshoe. The M4A1 should go over the other side of the cap and try and look out over the, that uh, near those trees. See if he can see the uh, Panzer here. The T-67 has decided to go towards the enemy cap. Dr. Nix has decided to stay this end of the map. Help the M4A1 defend it. I kind of get the feeling the Panzer Fear Alcelon H might have returned to his own cap area. T67 might spot him very shortly. If he does, of course, the T67 is well capable of defending himself. Well, he hasn't found him, so that also kind of indicates that he's somewhere on the north side of the map or the west side of the map. Dr. Nix has decided to make his way through the swamp towards the enemy. T-67 should start capping, to be honest. We haven't got much time left, but if he doesn't start capping soon, we'll have to find the Panzer gear and get a kill. Yep, start capping. And he's capping 3,130 hit points of damage. I think that's almost guaranteed to get Dr. Nix a high caliber. But that sort of performance, you'd expect him to get a high caliber. He's definitely going to get a Radley Walters, no doubt about it. Well, I kind of had the feeling that Dr. Nix is hunting that Panzer Fear Alcelon Age. He wants that last kill. To be honest, I'd much rather get to the enemy cap here and start helping the T-67 cap out. It's always the possibility that that Panzer gear might be trying to get a defender level. And he's waiting for the T-67 to get 70 cap points. He's going to get a reset and then get a draw around it. That's it, we're into the last minute. And there's the Panzer Fear Alcelon H, he's near our cap. So Dr. Nix does get a chance to get a kill, but the M4A1 makes it certain and wins the game. Here's the end of battle stats and that was an ace tanker game for Dr. Nix in the Bishop. He managed to get a sharpshooter for, for getting at least 10 or more consecutive shots on the enemy as well as an arsonist for setting light to one of the enemy tanks and watching it go up in flames and it did. Um, can't remember which one it was but he certainly set light to it. I think it was one of the M4A1 I think it was that he set light to. He also got a Bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits. In fact, he got 21. He got a Radley Walters medal for getting eight kills in this game, as well as a high caliber for dealing the most damage in the game and a Top Gun for getting at least six kills. His win eight from this battle, 19,300.
360, which is Super Unicum, and quite a bit more. Let's have a look at team score. Well, there he is, top of the table with 3,582 hit points of damage. The next highest scorer was the Skoda on the enemy team, 1,128. And the third highest damage in the game actually turns out to be his M10 RBFM with 1,086. So only four players managed to get over a thousand hit points of damage. And of course, uh, Dr. Nix managed to get the most in the game. When it came to kills, he definitely scored the highest with eight kills. Four kills went to the SU-85. Three kills went to the M4A1. And when it came to base XP, he's actually beaten. The Churchill 3 on our team managed to get 1,410. But Dr. Nix managed to get 1,154. And the third highest base XP was the M10 RBFM. <coughs> Excuse me. He fired 29 rounds in that game, got 22 direct hits and 3 penetrations on the enemy. Now, which ones did he pen? He definitely penned the M4A1 there. You can see 600 hit points on that guy. I'm pretty sure, yes, he did penetrate the M10 RBFM as well. 470 off that one. And I'm pretty sure he penetrated the bishop. No, he didn't. Actually, he didn't hit the bishop and pen. But did he do the... Yes, he did the Skoda. 271 and he penned that guy as well. So, very well done. Let's have a look at the uh, splashes. 21 splashes as well. 3,582 hit points, of which 3,364 were at more than 300 metres. He did receive a hit from the SU-85. It did pen him. Took a fair amount of his hit points away, but it didn't kill him. He hit 11 of the enemy, so there was only 4 enemy tanks he didn't touch, and 8 enemy vehicles were destroyed in the game. He got 50,462 credits from the battle, and after repair, ammunition, respawn, consumables took away profit of 22,554 credits. He got 25 bonds for the completion of a mission, and 1,731 XP and no multipliers, so that's all the experience points he took away. But what a great battle. Another Radley Waters in an RT. They are very difficult to get. Uh, almost as difficult as the Bulls medal, actually, for that matter. But uh, as you can see, Dr. Nix is an expert. He is an incredibly good player. And uh, if you ever see him on his live streams, he's so focused on the enemy. He really is. And he's so funny about sending them back to the garage. Uh, it's well worth a watch. Uh, if you look it on Twitch TV, I'll see if I can put a link down below to his YouTube, uh, his Twitch channel. Uh, definitely well worth watching there because he's quite funny about it. And uh, he is an expert RT player. So I hope you enjoyed that replay and the other one. If you did, please give this video a like. Do subscribe to our channel. Leave a little comment down below because it feeds the algorithm. And thank you for watching.